Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path for you are merciful and you love your whole creation and we your creatures glorify you father son and holy spirit the 
Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host and may glorify you forever. Amen. We sing Psalm 146 in the front part of the hymn.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 30. This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel, says. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. You said, no, we will flee on horses. Therefore you will flee. You said, we will ride off on swift horses. Therefore your pursuers will be swift. A thousand will flee at the threat of one. At the threat of five, you will all flee away till you are left like a flagship on a mountaintop, like a banner on a hill. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. He rises to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. O people of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. How gracious he will be when you cry for help. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes you will see them. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. Then you will defile your idols overlaid with silver and your images covered with gold. You will throw them away like a menstrual cloth and say to them, away with you. He will also send you rain for the seed you sow in the ground. And the food that comes from the land will be rich and plentiful. In that day, your cattle will graze in broad meadows. The oxen and donkeys that work the soil will eat fodder and mash spread out with fork and shovel. In the, great, in the day of great slaughter, when the towers fall, streams of water will flow on every high mountain and every lofty hill. The moon will shine like the sun, and the sunlight will be seven times brighter, like the light of seven full days, when the Lord binds up the bruises of his people and heals the wounds he inflicted. See The name of the Lord comes from afar with burning anger and dense clouds of smoke. His lips are full of wrath and his tongue is a consuming fire. His breath is like a rushing torrent rising up to the neck. He shakes the nations in the sieve of destruction. He places in the jaws of the people a bit that leads them astray. And you will sing as on the night you celebrate a holy festival. Your hearts will rejoice as when people go up with flutes to the mountain of the Lord, to the rock of Israel. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. John, chapter 5. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. If anyone sees his brother commit a sin that does not lead to death, he should pray and God will give him life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I'm not saying that he should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin, and there is a sin that does not lead to death. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps him safe, and the evil one cannot harm him. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. 
In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. We sing the Advent hymn, hymn number nine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Advent season for our meditation, as we anticipate our Lord's coming, I invite you to consider two aspects of Advent Evensong. Evensong is the name. It's used especially in, in England for Vespers. Vespers is part of what is called the daily office, daily services of prayer. In the morning, it's matins. In the evening, Vespers. And at bedtime, Compline. And each of these daily prayer offices or services has its own songs. All of them are mainly made up of the Psalms, the hymn book of the Bible. Each of them has their own canticle, a song that is from the Bible, like the Magnificat or the Nunc Dimittis. And they all have a hymn. A chief hymn, the main hymn of the office, is what's called the office hymn. It's a hymn that's connected to that particular time of the day. Usually, it runs for a season, most often these are Latin hymns, patterned after the great hymns of St. Saint Am Saint Ambrose. Many times they end with a doxology, a song of praise to the Trinity, like the Psalms, end with the singing of the glory be to the Father, the Gloria Patri. So the office hymn for Advent is the hymn we sang, o, o Lord of Light who made the stars. Sometimes it's called creator of the stars of night or in Latin, conditur alme siderum. It's been sung in Advent 
for Vespers since about the ninth century. Sung every evening from the beginning of Advent until Christmas Eve. Of course, the reason that it's an evening hymn is not because it's a, it sings of the evening. It does mention in the, in the Latin version, it does mention that the world is headed towards eventide. Not that we're at, we are at the end of the day, but not, not because it's sung ju- just in the evening of the day, but that it, we believe that this, since the ninth century, in fact, have believed that we're near the evening of this world. Because we as Christians believe Jesus' word, I am coming soon. Jesus is coming. And so we pray. We pray during this Advent season for him to come. We pray that he would hear our prayer. Hear us when we call. So that's what this hymn, that's what the Psalms, that's what our Advent evening prayers are about. In this hymn, in stanza two, it talks about Jesus' first coming, which we celebrate at Christmas. Jesus coming down out of heaven to earth In lowliness you came to earth. Can you just imagine God looking down from heaven? Looking down at all the cares and the concerns of mankind, of us mortals. All the strife and the conflict, all the sin. All the suffering and the toil, the pain. All the disease. Every disease all the fear and all the death. What wondrous love is this that healed our wounds by taking on our mortal cares. All of them. Taking every single care that we as humanity has and he takes that into himself by coming down and being born in the womb of a virgin to take it upon himself our stuff and then stanza five calls upon this same jesus but now addressed to the judge who comes to judge the living and the dead but it seems to me at least that this prayer this stanza stanza five is not really about judgment day it's not praying to to jesus that on judgment day he would do these things but it's praying to him as the judge who will judge the living and the dead. Have pity on your children's plight. Rise up to shield us with your grace. Deliver us from Satan's might. I think that's our prayer now. It's not just judgment day that we need help. It's now that Jesus teaches us to pray, deliver us from evil. Because it's now, it's in this life, it's in this world, in this year even, that our enemy Satan is seeking to devour us. It's now that our, the devil has his arrows aimed right at us and at our children. So it's now that we pray. Deliver us from evil. Lord, have pity, have mercy on us. And finally, Lord, Come quickly. And we heard from the prophet Isaiah. As soon as he hears, he will answer. And how gracious he will be when he hears and answers. And we heard from St. John. We know that, what, that we have what we have asked of him. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. So these daily prayers, these daily services are daily prayer services. Prayers, whether in the morning or the evening or at bedtime. Whether it's in the Psalms or the hymns or other prayers. Like our Lord's Prayer. These 
prayers. Teach us to pray. They teach us, they give us the words for the things that we need in this life. Which, thanks be to God, is the very life that Jesus came down into to take our place, to rescue us, to show us his grace, his mercy, his love. So that those times, sometimes even when we don't have any idea what to pray for, even when it feels like we just don't have the words, they teach us, they train us. So we repeat them. Let them train us like, like training wheels. Lord, teach us to pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Please stand, we join to sing the song of Mary the Magnificat. The congregation joins in the refrains as printed.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For our public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Alleluia. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. You may be seated. The choir will lead us in our evening hymn. 